Here is another case that will demonstrate a couple of uh, nice points, not only for itself, but in pathology in general. First of all, notice that uh, if you look a little bit closer on the left here, on the California coast, you will see that this is a classic textbook normal lung. Here's a bronchus. Uh, there's some inflammation around it. But perhaps, oh, 90% of this particular slide is not normal lung. It is something that is either in or abutting or on or invading normal lung. Uh, and the things that do that kind of thing are tumors. So this is 95% tumor and 5% lung. Let's zoom in on the area that we know is abnormal rather than spend the time reviewing normal lung histology. Even from this power, you can see there's a redder granular area here in which instantly you don't see little cellular differentiation very good. So you could automatically think that this is probably a necrotic area within the tumor. And you would think right because that's exactly what it is. Here you can see viable nuclei and cytoplasm. And in here you just see granular crud. Uh, perhaps pinker than usual, so characteristic of necrosis. Let's take a look in the area that is not necrotic and say a few intelligent words about this tumor. Well, the first intelligent thing you might say is that uh, some of it looks really nasty. Here's a big nasty nucleus. Here's perhaps an area where there are multiple nuclei. It seems like a lot of these stippled areas here perhaps our lymphocytes and fibroblasts reacting to it, which is either reacting to the tumor, but often, in a way, part of the tumor, even though those cells themselves may not be malignant. Look at this little tumor nest here. Notice how it extends out here. And notice how, uh, for lack of a better scientific word, just downright obvious, malignant, and nasty these tumor cells are. Some areas they're in little clusters and in some areas they're kind of spindly out by themselves that's really all you could say in all honesty about this tumor it's obviously malignant it's necrotic in some area it uh, is in little nests in some areas uh, it kind of streams off many of the cells are spindly and to be quite honest I think that on a uh, bad or perhaps even an average day, a lot of people would automatically slam dunk, say, well, this is some kind of undifferentiated carcinoma. And maybe say, oh, well, maybe it's a horrible adeno or maybe it's a horrible squamous, who knows. But the fact is, that's a nice general impression or theory. And this happens to be a sarcoma. Sometimes sarcomas can have kind of an epithelioid appearance. But the only way you could really differentiate sarcomas from carcinoma sometimes is to stain their antigens. And the antigens that would be classical for sarcoma cells like Desmin and uh, Vimentin uh, would be positive for sarcomas and negative for carcinomas. And on the other hand, many epithelial markers like uh, the various keratins and uh, EMA, for example, um, they would be positive for carcinomas and negative for sarcomas. This is a uh, large metastatic lyomyosarcoma or malignancy of the connective tissue smooth muscle that has extensively gone throughout the lung. The second principle I want to demonstrate and is so important is that whenever a sarcoma metastasizes, it generally tends to go to the blood vessels before it goes to the lymphatics. And therefore, anatomically speaking, any tumor that goes to the blood vessel, whether it's early or late, anatomically speaking, would have to then somehow lodge in the lung as its very next stopping point. So the presenting symptom of many sarcomas, whether they're lyomyosarcomas or not, would often be uh, pulmonary symptoms, uh, perhaps a cough that you can't shake or a cold you can't shake. And rather than getting better after a week or a couple of weeks or whatever, you get worse or more short of breath. 
and this is how uh, the classical uh, sarcomas often present. In other words, too late. Thank you very much.